Hi guys and welcome back. I'm joined with Dad because we're going to review our tow car which is a Ford Cougar 2 litre TDCI with the 180 horsepower engine and it's coupled to a 6 speed manual gearbox with the 4 wheel drive option. So without further ado, let's have a look around it. So, so the first stage is the exterior. So Dad, what do you like about the exterior? Uh, I think it's got pretty smart lines actually, it looks it pretty cool well. on the road. Um, and also practicality wise it's quite easy to clean actually because there's no real uh, places where there's like sharp edges uh, so when you're using the, the, the chamois as you do always when you wash the car for me um, it's really good actually um, yeah. it's, and it's a nice looking car it looks, looks pretty smart so this one has got it's finished in the uh, white platinum white uh, which is a 750 pound option we've got the optional 19 inch uh, wheels and we've also got the Vignale appearance pack fitted uh, too. So you can see the outside of the car here, um, I've got the key in my hand, the car is locked at the moment um, and one of the features on this car is the, uh, the locking and unlocking system where you don't actually need to use the key as long as it's on your person you can unlock the car. So I'll give you a demo. So I'll put the key in my pocket, I'll just put it on my hand, the car is locked at the moment put my hand on the door handle and the car unlocks. Um, while I've unlocked it you can see obviously it's a five door so uh, uh, plenty of room for both the front and back uh, seat uh, occupants to get in the car no problem at all. Um, if I come round to the back here um, you'll also see that there's two features with regards to the, uh, the tail lift so uh, to, to make access to the boot area you can either do it by if you've got uh, lots of luggage or uh, bags in your hands you can do it by swinging your hand your foot underneath uh, and it will automatically go up uh, but what we have found by putting the tow bar on the back which is a detachable tow bar um, it's actually interrupted slightly with that system so uh, the other way of doing it is literally uh, you can press the button under there or you can press it on the key and it's a, uh, a powered system so obviously then uh, it goes up no trouble at all uh, to make it go back down again you just press the button here uh, plenty of room in the boot um, and I'm sure Oliver will take some photos of that in a moment. Uh, what else can I tell you about the outside of the car? So as uh, we said before it's got the 19 inch wheels, uh, the highly polished wheels actually. Uh, so uh, they look really good when they're clean, uh, not so great when they're a bit dirty so I like to keep them clean as regularly as I can. Come around to the front of the car, um, you can obviously see the lines uh, down from this side with regards to it's quite sporty looking. Um, in terms of the light system on this car, um, it's got the, the running LED headlights, they look quite nice. And also it's got the, uh, the Xenon headlights as well, so in the night time they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, that's a bi-Xenon system um, and that works really well. So uh, as I'm actually now next to the fuel filler cap, I'll just show you this system. It's quite clever from Ford actually. Um, so what they've got is what's called Easy Fuel. Uh, obviously this is a diesel car, uh, they do a petrol version as well. Uh, but what it does mean is that then when you put the, uh, the nozzle in from the, uh, the fuel pump uh, you can't misfuel the, uh, the car because uh, only a diesel pump will fit this car and obviously a, a, an unleaded uh, pump would only then fit an unleaded car so it's quite a good system. Um, just sticking with the fuel actually um, with regards to uh, the towing of the, uh, the vehicle I'm getting at the moment from what the computer says about 35.9, 36 miles per gallon um, on a normal run without the, uh, the van on the back, it's around about 45, 46. So it drops about 10 miles per gallon, but actually still pretty economical considering I'm towing a fairly heavy vehicle. Looking at the rear of the car, um, I've got the boot open as you can see. Uh, things that I'd like just to quickly show you uh, with regards to uh, hiding away your luggage and all those bits and pieces, you literally have to push that down and that then makes that go back so you can retract and pull that back in and out. Uh, also, uh, what came with the car was this rubber mat, uh, and that's been really useful actually because it means that then literally when you've got a leather muck on there you can just shake it out and put it back in, so that works really well. Um, as I'm here as well, here's the tow bar. It's a detachable tow bar with uh, 13 pin electrics. It comes from uh, Tow Trust, uh, which is a really good manufacturer of tow bars. Uh, it was fully installed by uh, the garage when I bought the car and it was 795 to fit it um, and when you remove it you cannot see the tow bar at all so it literally the whole thing just drops out from under here um, the electrics uh, move out the way you don't know there's a tow bar on the back of the car it looks really smart 
Uh, I'll just quickly show you also the seat. Looking a bit closer into the boot then, you can see there's plenty of space here for lots of luggage, your weekly shop, all those usual things that you would do on most occasions. Uh, however, if you've got a lot more stuff to take, you can then fold uh, either uh, two thirds of the seat, all of the seat, or just one third of the seat. I'll just give you a quick demonstration how easy that is. So, uh, here's the parcel shelf coming out. That comes out very quickly. And then inside the car, there's some levers. And uh, that's two thirds down. Obviously, I can go the other way as well. And I can make the whole lot drop is that and you can see how much room I've then got in the back of this vehicle when I need it so we've done the outside of the car now let's look inside uh, as you can see I'm at the back of the car at the moment um, and just a little feature I thought I'd quickly show you so uh, I showed when the seats were going forward to make it go completely flat for when you're trying to make access from the boot uh, also passengers can have a reclining system as well so if the seats are too upright again it's the same lever and you just push that and now you've got a reclining seat which is really comfortable for, for those sat in the back. So usually when we go away I have to sit in the back because mum and dad obviously take the front seats which is, which is fine. So when we said about the reclining seats, when we're on a long journey the seats do recline and that means I can have a really good sleep because I'm also really tall. Mum is five foot, about five foot three and her seat is in the correct position and I've still got enough leg room. On that side if I sit behind dad he's five foot eleven and I'm a bit close but it's not too bad. For eating, you get a small table which is great. There's lots of pockets inside the door to put my phones and stuff. If I move over here, it's got an armrest which is really really comfortable and yeah the seats are uber comfortable and uh, they're an amazing feature of the car. Right, I'm in my favourite position in the car now which is in the driving seat. Uh, I love this car, I love to drive it, it's extremely comfortable. Uh, I've driven for probably 200, 300 miles uh, without a stop. Don't feel tired at all uh, because it's such a comfortable car to drive. Uh, it's done 11,000 miles so far and I've had nothing go wrong with it at all. Uh, it's been absolutely fine. Uh, tows the van beautifully and we'll talk about, a bit more about that in a moment. Um, just a couple of quick things while I'm sat in the driving seat. So it's got a memory seat function. Uh, so when I'm driving it, I've got it in number one. I'll just press number two, which is the position that Joe has, and you'll see it starts moving all by itself, uh, as do the wing mirrors as well. So everything lines up for the driver that's in the car for the position that's been set. A little bit close for me, so I'm going to go back to number one again. And uh, you can see that there, before the seat now moves back, everything adjusts itself, the back of the seat, uh, the bottom of the seat, the height, everything, to make sure it's comfortable for the driver that it's going to set for the position it's in. Right, so here's the, uh, the full functioning system now. I'm going to try and show you as much of this car's functions as possible. Being the Vignale, it's pretty loaded with everything it could possibly have. Um, just quickly, as you can see here, the dash dashboard is um, leather dashboard. Uh, so you can see all the stitching here. Uh, the same with the seats as well, which uh, you've already noticed, I'm sure, through the video. So I'll start the car, which is pressing the engine start button here. That's now started the car up. Um, and you'll see uh, it gives you a warning so at the moment the tailgate is open and also the passenger side rear door is open as well but I can clear through that no trouble at all. I'll just turn off the radio so you can hear what I'm saying. Um, it tells you it's a Vignale, uh, we know about that obviously anyway so that's fine. Um, if I start with the navigation then, uh, so uh, here's the nav system, uh, extremely intuitive and easy to use uh, so all you have to do, if, if first of all it will tell us where we are obviously, so it will be working out at the moment that we're in the middle of a field somewhere, so it's not going to show you anything at all. Uh, but what I can now do is I can decide where I want to go, so it knows that we're somewhere near Sirencester. Uh, maybe if I say I want to go to Sirencester Centre or I can actually then, let's, let's try and choose somewhere to go. Let's take a destination and we'll go for, I don't know, let's say um, London. Obviously, if you've got a postcode, absolutely fine. It would uh, allow you to, uh, to put that, but we'll just take the City of London Centre. So here we go. Uh, you press Start and it will now cal calculate the route, obviously. Uh, once it's done that, it will give you a few options. So it will either tell you whether you want to go on its fastest route or on the Eco route. 
uh, or the shortest route. So you can see here it's given us a number of options. So there's a, a blue route, which is the fastest route. Uh, there's a shortest route, which is the red route, and an eco route, which is the, uh, the green route, which is, shows this last little bit here. Uh, so we can choose one of those by pressing it, obviously, with the touch screen. Once you've decided the route you want to go, you press start, uh, and straight away, it will tell you where you need to go. Obviously, at the moment, we're not actually on a road, so it's not going to tell us much apart from get on the road and start the process. But uh, that's pretty much it with regards to the, the, the navigation. So one of the great things about this car as well, when I'm trying to uh, tow with the car, is uh, the fact that it's got a reversing camera. Um, but it's also, you can see, it got some lines on it. Um, so if I turn the steering wheel, you can see that the, uh, the lines are now changing. Um, and what that means is I can actually use this line, the black line, to, uh, to, to actually, and you can see the tow ball here as well at the bottom, um, you can use that to actually line up to your caravan. Uh, so when you're reversing onto your caravan, um, you get perfectly every time lining onto the van. So everyone outside thinks you've done an amazing job. Um, and wow, how do they do that? Actually, it's all through this system. It's really clever. Uh, also, obviously, when you're parking as well, if you've got an obstruction, I'll just quickly show you now. I'll reverse near something. You'll see the system start realizing that I'm gonna back into something. And uh, if I keep going, you will hear it start beeping in a moment and getting very excited. And you can see there, there's the car, and it's now showed that we're pretty close to that tree. So, uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit now about uh, towing with this car. Uh, you probably know uh, with watching caravanning with the Coxes that uh, we've got access to two caravans. Uh, one is a twin axle caravan. Uh, 1678 I believe is the, uh, the, the mass of that caravan uh, with its all up weight. Uh, and that's a 99% match to this car. Um, although actually within the, uh, the specifications of Ford they say that this car can tow up to 2.1 tonnes. Uh, so that's actually a lot more than, than what that caravan weighs. Uh, the second caravan is obviously the new caravan that we've just picked up, and that's just under 1,500 kilos, uh, the weight of that van. Um, and those vans, uh, obviously, I've towed with both of those with, with, with this car. And I have to say, uh, there's no struggling at all. Uh, the, the car copes with it really well. It's obviously four-wheel drive. Uh, that helps quite a bit. Manual gearbox, which means that I can control the car maybe a little bit better than on the auto, but the auto actually, I think, is a bit heavier, that vehicle, than the manual. Uh, but tows brilliantly. I haven't had any problems whatsoever going up hills, uh, controlling the, the vehicle uh, going down hills. It's, as I say, it's got hill descent control on the, on the car anyway, so that helps a lot. Obviously, there's anti-snake on, uh, on the on the caravan as well. That's also going to help as well for the uh, the Alco system that's fitted to that. Uh, but I love towing with this car. Gives you a lot of confidence. Uh, works really well, um, and I haven't got to work the engine too hard at all. Uh, it's very torquey, uh, and therefore that means that uh, I find it absolutely no trouble to tow both of those caravans uh, with confidence. Obviously, one of the important things about towing is you have to have towing mirrors. Uh, we use the uh, Malenko uh, Grand Aero 3 towing mirrors on this car. Uh, we had to change them from the old system that we used to use on the Audi that I had previously, which had like basically straps that would go over the front of the mirror um, and hold it in place. They don't fit on this car, and therefore we had to use the ones that bolt into the top of the, uh, the mirror here, and you'll see an overlay of that anyway. Um, they work really well with this car, um, and when, the, uh, when I lock the vehicle, and you'll, I'll show you quickly now, uh, you'll see that the mirrors automatically close in. It doesn't get obstructed in any way when they close.
So guys, I haven't really talked in this video too much because you know what, I don't tow of this car, but dad does and I hope he's done a great job and I think he has, of telling you why we love our car. We've had it for the best part of two years and you know what, it's been faultless. We've never had an issue with it. It's never had to go for a recall. It's never broken down, touch wood. We've had no issues with it. And you know what, I, we would recommend it to anybody. So thanks for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe. If you don't, didn't like the video too much, say, say to us in the comments. Uh, please subscribe, hit the notification button, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, bye. bye.